I came on board, a lot of uh, tax administration bodies have indicated interest to work with Nigeria. And in so many of these uh, interests that was indicated, we've been able to formalize it from the issue of capacity building, experience sharing, and other technical matters that we'll be able to move tax administration to a level, particularly now that we are challenged with disruptive technology. So we've come to the agreement with that, without that collaboration, without us working together, and exchange experience and technical uh, uh, know-how, we will not be in a position to touch the lives of our citizens, we will not be in a position to mobilize revenue for governments that, that appoint us ahead of revenue administrative bodies to be able to get enough to run or to fund the budgets that they, pre they prepare here in This is a subject which is very current and very pertinent to most of the tax administration everywhere, whether it's tax administration or general business affairs, the focus is on digitalization. So digitalization is the future and we want even us as tax administrators to be on the same path as the business community and that's why our focus now is on digitalization of the tax administration because we believe it can sort out a number of issues that we have in our day-to-day -day activities. It's really a good uh, opportunity, provide an opportunity for the members to discuss uh, on latest development related uh, to digital economy and what are the problems that the current situation uh, poses to various uh, tax administrations. So it's also a good platform for member countries to actually be updated on the development on this uh, topic, uh, especially things, uh, standards that have been discussed at the OECD, OECD level. Um, so it's, it's a good opportunity for all members to uh, discuss, share um, experiences and also problems and issues that uh, each other face. The digital era is here. However, in all of this also are embedded tax challenges that include problems with identifying track incomes from companies as well as incomes from individuals. Exempt are based on physical presence in the digital era. So we must review the rules and make them work. Countries must cast aside their differences or their individual self-interest to jointly develop workable, simple, and fair solutions. In the face of evolving global and domestic socio-economic challenges, the administration of President Muhammad Buhari has deliberately taken some strategic steps in creating a conducive environment for business activities to thrive and encouraging foreign direct investment. These measures include the provision of trade and investment incentives, review of tax policies and legislation to improve on tax certainty and fairness, and implementation of our Ease of Doing Business program, which monitors all indices of doing business in Nigeria with a view to removing bottlenecks that are potentially a clog in the wheel of economic progress and prosperity. When I talk about digital economy, for example, and I say, well, you have people in your country who are selling goods online, who are providing services online. Your focus for that will be very different from international suppliers who are selling services into your country. In fact, the strategy will be different from those international suppliers sending goods to your country because goods are still physical. They come through your border. Services won't, party will not. If you then dissipate energy on people who are doing digital transactions within your country, you are losing focus in terms of priorities because in any case, they are already in your country, right? So, change management, digitalization in the digital economy, and we need big data 
for risk-based tax audit. I do think that we live in a world now where the tax man should know where to audit. The system should tell you because it's connecting so many things together to tell you the taxpayer that you need to be worried about. One important thing, um, particularly since we're talking to ourselves, is that within the Commonwealth, you have different groups of economies. You have economies where they're struggling. Struggling with the economy, struggling with poverty, struggling with education, struggling with even connectivity, and struggling with even the whole idea of being part of the digitalized world. And I have experience. So it is hope that as we discuss, we look at the full range to move forward. So with that... But more generally, I think, is the, the whole question is, yeah, you need education programs. And this picks up the point that was made this morning by a number of speakers that explains why these enterprises, why these micro-enterprises should be paying taxes. We, like any other African country, are struggling with the informality. About 50% uh, of our GDP is from the informal sector. Uh, from the employment angle, it employs about 80% of uh, uh, the labor force in the country. <coughs> Encouraging tax compliant demands, not only lowering costs, but also strengthening the potential benefits of formalization from increased security to new economic opportunities. For the last couple of years, we have been digitizing um, all government, uh, government uh, services, including obviously tax administration. Um, and to, for example, share a couple of um, uh, uh, services that we've digitalized. Uh, since 2011, we, we, we digitalized filing and, and payment, and that means uh, uh, from, the tax, uh, from the tax perspective, uh, all the taxpayers are able to uh, do e-filing and, and, and payment actually using different uh, payment channels, including banks, including uh, uh, mobile uh, mobile wallets uh, through telecoms, uh, mobile money uh, in, in our case. I want them to give us 20 minutes um, country experience, but it should be centered around what they have done as far as the taxpayer information and security and information, uh, confidentiality, and then um, the challenges that they have faced so far, and then solutions that you have preferred. When it comes to getting information about tax payers, uh, avoiding the tax eviction, and anything you want, you can use technology, AI, big data, to analyze people, even from social media, to know who is avoiding to pay tax or to know their worth so this technology make it possible for us to get whatever we want and to ensure every person comply to the tax law so historically 400 years of pieces of paper going here and there and everywhere um, it's very laborious it's costly, it takes a lot of time to do. And it is right that we start to build, uh, remove that inefficiency and build digitization into, into what we do. Why? Well, it's good for the citizen because it gives them a quicker, easier way of dealing with their taxes and with government as a whole. How do we give this comfort to, to the taxpayer? Is first of all, this exercise is being, doing, is being done by uh, an independent body. Also, in terms of uh, processes and procedures, we have developed three main aspects of those administrative policies and procedures. One is based on the physical security, second one is based on information security, and the third one is based on the human resource aspect. So, I think our presenter, I mean, our panelist mentioned about it earlier. It's about, we tend to forget about this human approach to uh, taxpayer confidentiality and information. Our officers need to be regularly and constantly reminded of, our, our, of their duties to maintain this, this confidentiality issue. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day two of our conference today. Our session starts with digitalization and the harmonization of the tax system. The session this morning is on digitization and the harmonization of the tax system. Um, before I proceed, I think I should invite uh, to the podium uh, our presenter, Belema of Oribo. What I'd like to focus on here is uh, the twofold importance of digitalization, uh, basically the operational aspects of it and also the strategic aspects. And of course, when we do that, we come to the theme of today's discussion, which is harmonization. And that in itself has challenges and benefits. So I'm just going to put all these on the table and that should feed into our panel discussion. Experience has shown that tax administration can also develop homegrown solutions. In this room, Nigeria, I think yesterday there was a reference to the homegrown solution, tax promise. That's an homegrown solution that has been providing the answer to some of the questions that have been asked over the time. As, a, as an administration, it's important that you, 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 you provide an, an enabling environment that promotes innovation because innovation cannot be done without, without risks. So, kudos to FRS uh, for that. The tax administrations can play an essential role in responding to national and international crises. The connectivity that tax authorities have with citizens is generally the highest within government and is immensely useful in those times of need and even beyond. It is creating unfair parallel trading to the shop owners who trade traditionally because goods come into the into countries without paying tax. As I said previously, we now have the one-stop shop and I think it is working well to curb uh, tax evasion and uh, that's my opinion on the subject. We cannot be policing the digitalized economy with manual process. We need to restructure our tax incentive regimes so that we don't give away our taxes to other countries and we need to upscale the capacities of our officers so that they can and do effectively these emerging issues. I thank you very much. We need to realign the taxing rights, and that's what Amount A tries to do in respect of, um, of the largest and most profitable countries, uh, companies, and, uh, and to source the revenue to put the profit uh, in the jurisdictions where the users and the customers are located for those countries to tax according to their, uh, their tax rules. So, pillar one and pillar two, uh, in my view, are an answer to these two problems. And therefore, there is a bifurcation. So, pillar one is supposed to take care of uh, you know, the attribution of profits to markets. And pillar two is supposed to address the problem of tax competition, where you were seeing dislocation of activities in jurisdictions, uh, which were not exactly how they were A successful portfolio modernization, especially a large-scale one, requires more than the right technology. We must know that there are both people and organizations included in change management. The success of large-scale modernization hinges upon awareness, acceptance, and ultimately the adoption or buy-in of all the affected individuals. Anonymized is the taxpayer doesn't know which officer or officers are handling the case and unbundled is that we unbundled the process of assessment that of, of uh, you know identifying issues verification review pre-audit and technical inputs into separate verticals what is the three-phase model that FRS adopted the first is to prepare for change we know that this change is coming so what and what do we need to do to prepare for the change and then when the change is being introduced from the design stage what exactly are we doing in managing those changes and I, I, I will tell you briefly how that intertwines with the change managing the change at individual level so, implementing new, new digitally enabled processes 
uh, not only called processes, but we, maybe we put another term to say re-engineered processes uh, with new products is what we are trying to get to. Quick word about the Government of Canada's digital standards, and you can see on that busy slide that we have a lot of them. Uh, but we know that people are the key to managing change in any organization. That's why we're focused on providing our employees with the right information, tools, and skills to become part of our digital tech transformation. By taking the time to analyze its needs and the environment and create the right initiatives for its people, the CRA aspires to offer the best possible conditions for a seamless transition to digital. Analyzation, it is always easy to analyze complex data at the touch of a button. And slowly and steadily, we've started doing that. And like in FRS now, we have a department that analyzes, that acquires and analyzes data. And with that, we made a lot of inroads into getting the informal economy. A lot of the ideas shared here today, uh, shared at this conference in the last couple of days, will be very useful to the states, especially, like you said, in the informal sector. We heard from, from Ghana when they talked about their uh, GPS, how they used to tag houses, and then we heard about how uh, some countries use uh, the number plate of the uh, Okadas uh, to actually track this uh, informal sector. As we have said, this sector is very, the informal sector is something that you want to really tax. My takeaway is that the time has come. Gone are the days when we depend on oil revenues. We have to mobilize our domestic you know, revenue resources. And um, we have to do more in enlightenment. And the taxpayers should see their monies working. Technology is an enabler to the tax system. And I think that those uh, three Ps are really critical before you implement any technology. We co-create something that will fit our country and our problems so that we are able to progress forward. So for me, that's one of the biggest takeouts from this particular conference, that there are meeting of minds, there are policy experts, tax experts, tax administrators, sharing their experiences, sharing their exposure, sharing their learnings, sharing their failures and their successes. And from what I would do, what we're doing as delegates, is speaking all that and saving it and molding into something, a solution that can work for our own countries. We've gone through a lot of models, you know, where you are able to see the step by step of some things that we have done in the past that we can then now have a relook at, oh, we could have done this better, to be able to really see that we can sharpen the saw and get better results. So by other, all in all, it's been a great program. Uh, basically, so that you can, you know, follow along with the economy that has itself in transform, the world economy has transformed from manual to, to digital largely. So take away is that you must uh, develop capacity and capability on, on the part of the of employees, on the part of management, and also to, uh, encourage the taxpayers to adopt technology so that you can uh, improve uh, uh, service delivery in the, in, the, in the informal sector and even in the formal sector too.
A grateful thank you, Nigeria, for hosting us. Thank you for doing it like the way the big brother can do it. So we appreciate you and thank you, Abuja. We shall be back.